Hey guys, how are you all doing? So today I thought I would put up my thoughts and my review of the XP-38G, the Tier 2 premium aircraft in War Thunder. Awesome, awesome aircraft, and I highly suggest you pick this up if you enjoy flying, flying the P-38G, as this will give you a bigger research boost bonus and a bigger credit earner. You know all the stuff with premium aircraft. That's what it does better than the P-38G. Uh, so let's quickly just take a look at the actual frame of the aircraft. Very, very nice frame. Uh, this design, when it came out, was never before seen in World War II, so it was very uh, kind of people didn't like it at first, but when it actually took combat, when it actually flew in the air and had, had these amazing aerial kills, great bomber interceptor, people started realizing the potential of this aircraft, and that's why they built the P-38G-1 as a result of the XP-38G, which was the test aircraft. You can probably already guess that it X stands for experimental P-38G. So that is that, clearing that up immediately, because some people are confused why it's called the XP-38G. Um, going into the statistical differences between the XP-38G and the P-38G, there is not much in fact. I would even go to say there isn't any other than two very, very slight differences. The max speed of the XP-38G is 683 kilometers an hour, while the P-38G only has a 680 kilometer mile a 680 kilometer per hour mark. Excuse me, my throat. Uh, another difference is that the turn time on the XP-38G is coming in at 0.5 milliseconds less than the P-38G, which has a 20 second, while the XP-38G only has a 19.5. Other than that and the research and research point bonuses, nothing is different about the aircraft. Absolutely not a thing. Uh, one more thing that is different though, the color schemes. This one is coming in at a brushed kind of metal, uh, kind of silver color scheme, while the P-38G is coming in with the default olive green color scheme with a white underbelly. Very, both very, very nice, both very, very attractive. Uh, I do, however, know that the XP-38G, if you go through the customization mark, does have a premium only um, customization option of the striped metal, very, very famous, very, very identifiable mark of the P XP-38G and the P-38G alike. So I do like that. I will eventually end up buying that, just not now. Ooh, that was a mouthful. Uh, that's what she said. All right, moving along, P-38G, quickly taking a look at those customization options. Invasion stripes, same thing. Same exact thing as the P-38G, XP-38G. So you're going to spend double if you do enjoy flying both aircraft with this color scheme. Anyway, moving on. Oh, my phone just went off. The biggest, I'm going to tell you right up, right here, right now, if you flew the P-38G and you enjoy flying that aircraft and you know the problems with it, but as well as the advantages with it, and you sincerely enjoy flying it, go buy this right now. Because you're going to have three times the fun, three times the XP, and three times the awesomeness. It's just, it's just a well worth buy. However... The P-38G is a very specific and particular aircraft because it does have problems that no other fighter aircraft has. Starting off from one thing I've noticed flying this aircraft, that you will get killed a lot if someone comes up behind you. And not in the sense that your plane will get ripped apart, because it will, in the sense that your pilot is going to get killed in almost immediately. I mean, look at the range that the enemy pilot has to shoot. All he has to shoot is right there, right in the center. There's nothing blocking it. There's nothing intercepting the pilot from the bullet. Uh, I say this because if you're flying the P-400 or the uh, P-63A, you have all this to shoot through. You have the tail section. It's very hard to hit, and sometimes they don't even bother aiming for it. But with the XP-38G and the P-38G alike, it's very easy for pilots, enemy pilots especially, to not only rip apart the aircraft, but to also kill the pilot. And even though there's... Six millimeters of protection, I think, last time I saw nine or something. 9.5 millimeters of protection, that's not protecting shit. However, on the front side, we're going to move into the armor now, if you haven't realized that. On the front side, if you're going head-to-head -head with enemies, and they're specifically aiming for your pilot, they're not going to have such luck with penetrating that, because that is a almost 60 millimeter degree angle, 57 at the most. Uh, actually, we're gonna, the higher you go up, the more you go up by millimeters, but man, that's pretty, pretty good 
if the, if you're going head on head, uh, not so good if they want to shoot you through the gun mantlet and through the uh, the offensive ammunitions rack because that will penetrate as it only has. Let's take a look. Six. Seven at the most, maybe, maybe 6.5. I'm going to say 6.5, 6.5 millimeters of armor. So they will penetrate that and they will hit your feet. I'm not sure if that actually kills your pilot. I know that the headshots do. That's why I told you about that. Okay, moving on. We are heading to the internal kind of build of the aircraft. Another problem, another weak spot of the aircraft. People are going to hit this thing. Traction of control surfaces. Very, very easy to take out because that's one of the first things they're going to hit on this aircraft because they're going to be aiming, not even aiming, maybe they won't be mistakenly aiming for this, but they're going to hit this back wing. I'll flash it up for you right here. They're going to hit that regardless of whether they want to or not. And they're going to damage your control surfaces and it's going to be a pain in the ass because you are practically fucked. Excuse my French. Uh, moving along, the engines aren't too big of a problem in this aircraft unless you're doing a head-on-head -head. but hopefully those five machine four machine guns one cannon will do the trick so that's what it looks like fuel tanks on one side fuel tanks on the other liquid cooling system all the all the cool technical stuff moving on into the armament should have done this a little bit earlier but it does have 120 millimeter an m2 cannon with 150 bullets uh, I normally play realistic, so I don't pay attention to the real time. That is just stupid information for me. But when I do flash up arcade, that is nice to know. That is 40 seconds. As well as having 120 millimeter, it also has four 50 caliber, excuse me, 50 caliber machine guns, four 12.7 millimeter M2 Browning machine guns with an ammo of 2,000, which is really, really good. So this plane does really really well against bomber interceptor people this is what the plane was made for it's a heavy fighter if you do engage in some fighters stay up high get up high stay there they can't they can't catch you unless they're they're really maneuverable fighter i'm going to say that because of, from my experiences it's very very it's a lot easier to get away than to out turn because this is a big clunky aircraft you want to you want to bomber intercept you want to get back land on your field go back up bomber intercept again this is what it's playing good this is what this plane is good for this is what it's known for that's what i use it for i do not engage fighters unless i know that i can stay on their tail well Oh, what else is there left to say about this aircraft? Uh, I'll run through the history if you're interested. If you're not, you can skip to the gameplay section of this video, which will be later. But here's the history. Uh, the XP-38G was a variant, was before the uh, P-38G was an experimental, as I mentioned before, and it had its first flight on January 27, 1938. And production of the P-38G began in 1930, 1941, June 1941. So that was, that was three years. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Probably am. Yes, it's three years. Great. Uh, the G variant was finally created in 1942 and was based off the E and F variants. Um, the plane carried formidable armaments consisting of 20mm Hispano and M2 cannon, as I said before. Uh, it could carry two 300 gallon external fuel tanks, but of course they don't have those in War Thunder. Uh, so that's about it on the history mark. We've ran through the. Um, protection as well as the armaments i ran through the statistics so i think the last thing i want to do with this video today is show you one or two games where i really enjoyed flying this aircraft and where this aircraft really really stood out so wait here i'll be back in a second grab your popcorn grab your drinks because this is going to be really really good i'll see you in a second all right everyone here we are in a replay that i recorded today um basically this is this replay is going to show the prime concept of this airplane which is a fighter bomber interceptor uh it can attack heavy fighters as well as bombers that is the main thing you want to look out for um excuse me uh bombers are your main target they are slow you will always catch them up and if you do want to use this thing as an attack aircraft i did say you want to boom and zoom that uh the enemies you don't want to stick around uh try to uh outturn them that is not this plane you do not want to do that in this plane 
Uh, another thing is if you are booming and zooming and you do know how the P-38 works, the wings do rip off very, very easily. Um, I haven't had that happen to me recently, but they do rip off. And I'll, uh, be careful with that because uh, if, if you're doing a boom and zoom, that's the main thing you want to watch out for. Uh, going back to the bomber bomber side of this aircraft, in this game type, I do take out two bombers. They're both HE-111Hs. And even though I take some shots, all right, maybe not some, a, f a lot, I take a lot of shots in this game, you'll see this plane holds up quite well. It even puts out a fire or two, so stay tuned for that. Um, I'm probably going to fast forward because I already talked about the plane quite a lot and I don't want to backtrack at this point or uh, go over myself, say two, t two things the same. But I do fly around quite a bit. Uh, I'll just fast forward a little bit because it's a long time. As you can see in the bottom right hand corner, it's a long time before I engage any fighters. In fact, it's actually quite weird. I have I normally play realistic and I really wanted to get a uh, arcade battle in because I want you to sh see both sides. I might still do that because I'm recording parts of the video like yesterday I recorded the uh, external and internal views of the aircraft today I actually played a game in it this game in fact recorded it recording it right now maybe I'll go back put in an arcade one I'm not too sure yet I p played a good amount of arcade say like seven today and I wasn't able to get a good game in. I just don't like how arcade works there's just too many planes in one area I don't like that at all it's very congested if you will but here we are. I finally spot my two targets that will eventually be taken out. They are right, if uh, I will pause it to show you if you did not get a good glimpse. Right there in the center of the screen, there's two dots. It's around 12 o'clock facing my plane if, the, if my plane is 12. So there are my targets, and those are the two enemies I'll be engaging this match. Quite a short match for a realistic battle, I have to be honest. Ten minutes isn't a whole lot, especially since eight, or seven or six minutes of that work was flying. So I was surprised that this game lasted as short as it did. But I'm taking a look around because I did spot my targets. Now I'm focused on them and I want to make sure that there's nothing coming on behind me. There's nothing going on the side or the top or the right side. Uh, to uh, break contact of these two because uh, it is very important that I take them out because if I don't they will devastate the base on my bottom right hand corner and uh, get a huge blow to our bar so I really want to take those guys out so I'm still flying toward them I'm gonna fast forward a little bit here just to save you the trouble still looking around for any fighters now I'm getting close to them I'm getting into guns distance I'm probably a kilometer out at this point uh, maybe even less, maybe like 98. Still looking around. As you can see, there's a, a Fock Wolf trailing oil. Don't worry about him. He's three three kilometers down that way. Finally getting into gu guns distance of these two guys. About to open up. I uh, release my throttle a bit because I don't want to overshoot. And now I start lighting them up like it's the 4th of July. Because again, we are flying an American. They start shooting back. I'm weaving as much as I can, but I'm not that great at intercepting bombers. Trying to go for the engine, take his tail off. He is no problem. Unfortunately, this guy does end up getting really good shots into me, and my and uh, I'm worried at this point that the wing will tear off. So, but luckily, uh, the fire gets put out from the speed I guess I'm going, which is uh, 283 kilometers. Loop back around. He's trying to retreat. He doesn't know what to do. He knows I'm going to get him at this point. I've taken out, I think, his gunner, maybe. I've definitely critted him. So now I'm just going in for the final kill, as well as watching myself, because I am, as well, critically damaged. He's in gun's distance. Put in a few shots, critical hit, critical hit him, and finish him off. So, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Even though I've taken many many hits and let's just let's just look around this aircraft many 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 hits in fact we're gonna go in on the cockpit view in a second just to show you what kind of uh, bullets have hit it and why my pilot should have died but didn't so we're gonna take a look at that in one second 
There we go. Oh, I can't switch around. Maybe I can. Operational view, flyby. Well, I guess I'll just keep you in this view and I'll just pause it accordingly. So, first of all, look at my instrumental panel. It's covered in bullets, absolutely riddled with it. I count one, two, three, four, five, at least five just on the flight control panel, as well as two that penetrated, three maybe that penetrated, went probably behind me on the other side, and one that was actually deflected by that 60 millimeters of uh, glass. Uh, at least the effective thickness of it was 60 millimeters. So that's that's why you do not get killed so much from the front because, as you can see, that did not penetrate. As we take a look around, more bullets have flown through the cockpit and out the other side. There's one. You can see all kinds of holes throughout my uh, P-38. Just, just so many bullet holes and this thing is holding together really nicely and in fact I can you're gonna have to take my word for it but it flew just fine maybe a little slouchiness around the uh, rudders but everything else was absolutely fine there's my confirmed kills the two HE-111s are down they are no longer a threat to that base and I can start worrying about the last JU-87G1 so I'm looking around for it, looking for any dots, maybe it hasn't been spotted yet, and then I notice that my teammate is already engaging him uh, right there. Right there, if you can see where my mouse cursor is. I'm looking around for AAs right now, uh, because they are pesky little things that if you get taken down by them is not fun. Look at that, just riddled in bullets, and I'm still flying, It's it's amazing. Excuse me, my throat. Still looking around for the JU-87 as well as watching my throttle because it is uh, overheated. My water is overheated and I did have a fuel leak for a second, but I did take care of that and that took care of itself. At this point, I'm convinced that no one knows where JU-87 is, but as I said before, I did spot him over here and a teammate is already engaging him. The teammate is somewhat competent, in fact there's two of them, and they do end up taking down the JU-87G1. Now, funny little blooper coming up here. I'm just throwing around cannon ammo because I already see that we've won, and I decide to go for artillery. Now, my plane is critically damaged, as you know, and I nearly crashed here. Nearly. I panicked a little bit, but it didn't look like it in the video, but I did panic quite a big amount. And I do end up killing this left artillery right here. Which gives me the final blow medal. And the game finisher. Very, very fun game to play. I enjoyed myself tremendously. And I hope you guys did as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. Remember, it's a bomber interceptor, not a fighter. Don't get engaged with Fock Wolves. Don't get engaged with Zeros. At least try not to get engaged with them. If you do, try Boom and Zoom or stay on the back of them if you can. If not, get out of there. You are quicker than them. Get out fast. Final thoughts of the aircraft. If you like the P-38G one i highly highly suggest you get the xp38 you're only gaining from this you're getting another great 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 fighter heavy fighter aircraft that a great bomber interceptor as well as receiving the uh research point bonus and the reward bonus um with it so guys with all that said thank you so much for watching this video please like comment and subscribe to my channel and if you want me to do more reviews i'll happily do that just let me know in the comments below as always, thank you for watching and enjoy yourself in whatever you're playing. Peace out and goodbye.